Good morning, everyone. Dutchman Mods and Repairs back. Today we're working on a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. It's got the 3.6 liter in it. But what we're going to be working on is removing and replacing the AC condenser. Here's the the part number in company that I bought it from. Got this on uh, Amazon for I think it was like 130 bucks. But yeah, it's brushed aluminum, so I'll have to hit it with a little bit of paint. No biggie. If you follow the channel, you've seen a couple videos come up on some things that have uh, that have got us to this point. The hissing sound under the dash, what that kind of, uh, how we diagnose that, what it led to actually identifying the leak that we had down uh, underneath the driver's side hand portion of the engine area down in here. We got a video on both of those. And so, yeah, that's led us to today, working on this. And there's a couple different ways that I've seen people do this remove and replace of the AC condenser. And it's actually the AC condenser slash transmission fluid cooler um, the transmission coolers up top and the condensers on the on the bottom side you can see in there it's dark the, the unit inside there is black so I have some high temp flat black leftover paint that I'm just gonna hit kind of the front side and the sides a little bit on the condenser not gonna put a heavy coat on there just give it the black hue so it's not visible through the through the grill it's high temp stuff like I said a couple different ways you can do this so I've seen some people come in and, and work from the top where they've removed weather stripping they removed off the the top cowl part of the uh, radiator and condenser holding bracket here along the side some stuff like that and others that get into the front and remove the the mumper cover the grill get a couple of uh like kind of strut brackets that go to the side you got the horn and the and the hood that's the way i'm gonna go about doing it because i think it's just gonna be better access and it's just the way i looked at it it just looked like a better way of doing it so i can't say for sure which which way is better which way is quicker i'm not in this for quick i'm in this to do this right and so that'll be my journey let's get into this first thing i'm gonna do is pull this out of the box check out what color it is and if need be hit it with some black paint pop those out 10 millimeter Turn the wheel on the inside to have a little bit better access and then rinse and repeat on the other side. All right, underneath here you got four more of these little plastic rivets. One right there, one right here, that one right here, and then one right there. That's all you've got here, right? He's got these little tabs. Plastic tabs. Just push in. Driver's side. Get the wheel over. Wheel in. Show these. Ten millimeter. Ten millimeter. Off. 
13 millimeters. So now we have one there. those things together kind of use your nails and then you can you can pull out same thing over here all right now that this is loose just set it down in there and now we can get it this all right my system has already <laughs> bled out leaked out you can actually see just down at the very very bottom where it's like really really dark down there that's where I suspect my leak is coming we'll get a closer look in on this when we get the condenser out but now we want to undo the, the the coolant line connections this is a 10 millimeter nut you want to loosen that up and take that off get over here on the transmission side and we've got these little plastic tabs we need to push back to get it some clips these little plastic rings here course So we look down in here, we can see this is where the condenser will rest there. And then rest right in there. So you can see where this was leaking. 
somewhere in here is where the freon was leaking and it's very possible that it was leaking right here at this that solder joint pretty wet right there that would be where I would lean towards that joint is where it was leaking from Oops. Uh, case in point if you're there will be trans fluid in there right and they talk about like uh, like how much fluid might come out of there you, you may want to add some trans fluid back in half a cup it's not that much it comes out but figure half a cup is what you're going to put in there so let's get the other the painted one in here but we will need to get we will need to mark these you know use these guys here uh, for our cooler locations all right, now we want to get these these tabs off that are for the holders. Over right here, down, down. Same thing here. down on the ground to get the new one. A couple things I recommend is have some good head to the hard one. See how it's painted black. Okay, make sure as you're doing this you've got the AC lines to the driver's side and the transmission lines are up and to the dry, uh, passenger side. Not too hard to get it wrong, but when you put these on, you don't want to put them on back with these clips. I'm just putting down some extra towels over here so that when we flip this upside down, I'm not dripping trans fluid all over my, my brand new one. Get them lined up as much as possible. Okay. What we're gonna do is get a really small Phillips. And we're gonna basically very gently work through the other one because you just wanna just slightly spread, kind of push apart these these fins. So when you're going through, I'll, I'll just exaggerate because this is a, this is junk, okay? You basically just kind of them apart you don't want to damage this guy here the cooling fins they can be bent and, and whatnot nothing goes through those but through the solid part here you don't want to I imagine someone could but you don't want to mess that up so let's come over here and I'm kind of feeling a little bit as I go down because I want to make sure that it should be fairly easy to to wiggle that through. Let's see what we got on the other side. So here's what we've got. Got our one hole there. Got our one hole there. Like this. Just kind of push it through. And again, there's some little there's some additional little tabs in there that will go kind of help guide this in as you push it through. And take this plastic piece here, hold this side, 
snap it together. Same thing on this side. Nice and easy. Keeping it more or less perpendicular to everything. Doesn't have to be perfect. And snap on the back. And when we put that in, that'll be exactly where we want it to go for the polished steering puller. So we've got those just pressed through and then snapped on the other side. So now we're gonna put it in. When you put it in, there's a couple spots on the on the bottom on this side and on that side there that it, the condenser will, will rest in. And then remember up top, you'll have the little clips that it pushes into. So here are those clips I'm talking about. You get this guy and see if we can get a side view. It's got just a little kind of little dog that catches on the top of that. And then this guy here, this is the piece that that snaps in and holds on this side. I don't like the way that top one, the bottom one looks like it's okay, the top one. Whatever. See if we can pry it up a little bit more, but that'll be about what we're going to go with. So now we're going to get the power steering cooler up, snapped in place. Then we'll get transmission lines connected, AC lines with new gaskets. Gasket slash O-rings, there's what I'm using. Got those at AutoZone for like 30 bucks or something. On the transmission side, there's a couple of caps right here, right there, right there. We gotta pull those off. There's already rings on here, so all we have to do is we'll push the lines on, tug on them, make sure they're good and connected, and then push the plastic rings here back in place where they need to be. So push them on till you hear a click. Coming off its tab there. Yep. Get your little caps. These are like, I guess these are like little clip retainers. Have to get a screwdriver to get that one more on. There we go. And again, this is just the clicker here and here. It's just the, just the plastic retaining clip thing going on the good click you want is for the the transmission lines and tug on those pretty good even after you hear the click make sure they're not going to come off because if those aren't on there and you start the car up you're going to have transmission fluid everywhere or you certainly don't want to be on a road trip and it's leaking a little bit and all of a sudden you're dead in the water in the middle of Arizona somewhere all right, so let's get over on the AC side. Let's get these O-rings off. Don't reuse them. Why risk it after all this work? Let's use a little screwdriver to pull them off. I've got the two O-rings. I just, these are the, the old ones here. I went and got two new ones at the bag. They match up. I'm just gonna push those on. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I suppose if you wanted to put a little pag oil on there, you could, but it's it's a, it's a pretty good fit. We'll push that out of the way. We'll get a 10 millimeter socket on there, take this little plate off, get the plugs out, and then snug it down. All right, let's get the lines pushed on here. That manifold, everything was nice and clean. I 
And I'm gonna not drive that with the impact. I wanna feel that with a wrench. So I'm just gonna snug this. It doesn't have to be real, real tight. Keep in mind it's aluminum, so I just went real snug and then maybe, you know, another quarter turn. That's all you need. So we've got that. We've got the AC lines hooked up, the trans cooler's in place, or not the trans, uh, the power steering cooler is in place. We've got the transmission lines over here connected. Now it's just a matter of reconnecting everything and getting the AC system, system charged. I'm not overly concerned about uh, oil in the system. The charge I have has some PAG oil for the AC system that will, go, that will go in there. So I'm not overly concerned about that. But if you are concerned about that and you're not gonna do the charge yourself, you're gonna take it somewhere, just let them know the system's completely down. They'll probably vacuum it, vacuum it down anyways. All right, we've got a few things put back together again before we get it too far together again i talked about earlier the the importance of the transmission lines and any kind of leak and what we're going to do right now i've already gone through and made sure everything's not in the way nothing's going to fall into a fan or fall down in, into a belt make sure that if you're going to do what i'm doing right now we're going to start the car up and make sure at least from the start you know started up standpoint we don't have any transmission fluid leaks so let me go get that started up so what i'm going to do when i start it is i'm also not going to just leave it and park we're going to run it through gears so that the pump and everything is we're sure that fluid is going through everything through the system like it normally would be not just in park so we're just going to do this to be double sure Dry. All right, no leaks. We're dry on that. And I just basically cycled everything from reverse to neutral, down into drive and back. So we're definitely gonna call that good. So when you put the hood, the hood latch back on, make sure that the marks that you have for where it lines up, that you're putting it back exactly that way. Cause you don't want anything mess, mess you don't want a loose hood or it's, it doesn't latch correctly or latches uh, too much. Cause you can end up with some binding and, and crap like that. So it's really, really important. Like I said, when we were just taking this apart that you mark it so you know exactly, and you don't want to just do, don't just do left or right, you want an up or down reference as well.
now. All right, it, really when you put that, I couldn't show it all in detail, but uh, in the front here, there's like four little sleeves, like one here, one here, one here, one here, with tabs on the bumper cover that kind of come in. And then you'll, as you kind of hold that and hold that in place, you'll be able to kind of watch your lines, you know, just follow the lines of, of everything. You'll, you'll feel those, that cover start to kind of snap in as you work it around on both sides. And then just like when you took off, when you go and put it in on this side here, you'll have to kind of flare out or the, the cap, not the cap, but the bubble cover, right? It, it, it kind of, let me see if I can contort myself, kind of reaches around, kind of snaps around. So there's quite a few snaps in here and then snaps on the inside there. And then uh, all I'll do is I'll get underside. I'll put those. Uh, we've got the two turn ones that I did not know this unit had to put on, left and right inside, and then the four little push tabs underneath in the middle. Also, time to completion on this. You saw all the tools that we used throughout the video. Not too much. Eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter. Uh, the little pry tool for getting the buttons off. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You know, marking the, the hood latch, that was important. Make sure you got pictures before kind of where things go, especially those little air dowel, or not air director pieces that kind of go behind the grill there. The job would probably take two hours and maybe even a little bit less. But if you just kind of take your time, you've got everything in place, ready to roll, you can expect two hours, no more than three hours to do this job. So anyhow, if you found this informative or entertaining, give us a thumbs up. I appreciate that, it means a lot to me, all the effort that goes into these videos. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate that. We would really appreciate that if you'd come along with us on this journey working on different things in the driveway and around the house. We thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Dutch out.